everybody, it is Kyle back again today with a new video. It is now March in Toronto. Today is actually abnormally warm for this time of year. So this is a vlog. I've got a couple of projects I need to shoot that I'm gonna just do concurrently. So I thought I'd take you along for the ride. I'm starting here on the U of T campus and I'm heading downtown. I'm gonna start at Bay and King, right in the heart of the financial district and see where I get from there. But the goal is today for a school project, I need to shoot some long exposure photos of moving vehicles. Don't ask why, it's for a project, trust me. And I'll show you what those look like as I'm shooting them and what settings I'm using. And I also have my tripod here for those uh, slow shutter times. So only the parts of the frame I want to be blurred are blurred. Excuse the squeaking noises over here. And I've also decided I wanna shoot some like stock footage style, just shots of the city at night. So you can see now the sky is still pretty bright but it is rapidly darkening out here. You know, if you live in Canada, that's how it kind of goes for us. So I figured I'd take you along for the ride. I've got a little bit of a time limit. I've got pretty much two hours to get this whole trip done. Figured I'd take you along with me and hopefully along the way, teach you a little bit about shooting like cityscapes at nighttime or in kind of dusk situations. So let's go. First, we got to get downtown. So I've gotten off at St. Andrews Station. It's the closest I can get without going around the horn on Toronto Line 1. And now I'm taking the path underground to First Canadian Place, which is at Hingham Bay. If you know Toronto also, you know the path. Because although it is warmer than usual outside, it is still not warm in absolute terms. And now it is very dark, and I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, the path, by the way, it's Sunday night. This place is deserted. You'll probably see it better now. It, nobody is here. All the shops are closed, it's wild. This is the headquarters of one of the five largest banks in the country. It is totally deserted. COVID plus Sunday night means no crowds. So just down there, that is King and Bay. That is where I'm heading. Here we are. I've actually got almost exactly the lighting I want. It's a little brighter than it actually seems because I'm shooting at a really high ISO right now, so you can see me. But I'm actually taking photos and videos for the YouTube channel and for the school project. I'm gonna be switching out the lens for something with a shallower aperture. That way I, I don't have to shoot at such a high ISO. And when I'm shooting the photos, my shutter speed is a variable that's already accounted for uh, just because I wanna shoot at a low shutter speed, a really slow one, in order to get kind of the effect I'm talking about. So hopefully we can get going with this and I'll record some videos and shoot some photos. Basically what I want is I want a green light at one of the, one of the streets here and I want some cars to be going through at a pretty good clip. So with the slow shutter speed, they kind of blur across the frame a little bit, which is kind of the cityscape look I'm going for for this project. So I'm gonna start setting up the tripod, which I just put down here. I might pull out my phone for a little bit of the talking head vlog stuff, just because it's gonna be a little annoying with all these cars around and with the different lenses uh, to shoot on the camera. So let's get going on that. So as promised, I have pulled the phone out and I'm just gonna show you my process for setting up my camera for such a shoot. Basically what I'm gonna try and do is set up in my manual modes. So I was already shooting on the manual video mode, so that's accounted for. So now I just need to switch into photo. Doing this, I'm using the Canon 80D by the way, in case you were wondering. So now usually what I like to do is go into the digital photo preview. I know this isn't super well accepted in the professional photography community, but that's okay. So I still have to change out the lens, but pretty much what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna have a shallower shallower aperture than this, probably I'm gonna pull out either a 3.5 or a 1.8. My 1.8 is a prime, so I'll have to see how much depth I need. I can always move the tripod because there is lots of space in the plaza here. But what I am gonna do is I'm going to have a slightly lower aperture once I change lenses, and then hopefully also a lower ISO for two reasons. One, the shallower aperture, but two is because my shutter speed is gonna go way slower. So that means the number is actually gonna be getting smaller. So I'm gonna be probably doing a multiple second exposure. I'm thinking one or two seconds is gonna be plenty of time for cars to move within the frame. 
So I'll have to do a bit of a, an experiment. But also, because this shutter speed is going to be slower, that also means I can lower my ISO because, again, the shutter is gonna be open for longer, which allows more light in, hence less need for ISO, which is basically artificial sensitivity to light. So now I've actually got it set up in the way that I wanted. So I got my big honking lens. This bad boy right here is the Canon EFS 18 to 155, or sorry, 135 mil. So you'll see the preview is a lot closer to what I'm trying to get. So I've started with the shutter speed at one second. So that means the shutter will be open for a full second before closing, lots of opportunity for blur. I've actually increased the aperture a little bit because the image was too bright because I was already at my base ISO, which I wasn't expecting. Uh, just this aperture change as well as the shutter speed change, I went all the way from 5,000 ISO when I was shooting the vlog bits of this in the plaza, all the way down to the base of 100, which is not what I was expecting. Just for some context, I have moved to the other side of the street. I used to be down there. Now I'm up here under kind of the overhang at First Canadian Place, and the shooting's been going really well. So I have gotten a little bit closer to the street just so there aren't as many pedestrian obstructions. And then as well, I've been changing the settings that I've been using. So you can probably see on the screen here, I'm back at a higher aperture actually because I needed to change out the lens to the one I was already using to vlog. So that's kind of ironic. Just because I am closer to the street, I need a wider field of view. So this uh, 10 to 18 that I'm using for vlogging is perfect for that. Then you'll also see that my shutter speed has greatly decreased. So I was at a full second. Now I'm at about a tenth of a second because like cars on this street are going, you know, 50, 60 kilometers an hour. So if you do like the full one second of blur, you're not gonna be able to see anything but the headlight trail, which is kind of cool, but not really what I was going for. Pretty much any car that's coming by here, I'm just trying to pull autofocus on it, hit the shutter button and see what happens. So gotten a lot of good photos so far, which is really nice. Okay, so the situation is now that I've basically wrapped up the shooting I need to do for my project. Um, the shooting for my stock footage of like a downtown at night scene. Um, I am gonna hold off on shooting those just cause I am slightly running out of time. I still could do it, but I just, I, I don't wanna rush it. And then also I just would prefer the weather to be better. What I did do though, is I did try an exposure of 30 seconds uh, to see what the light trails look like in the intersection. That is on screen now. Um, I am thinking of trying to go to another spot to do another light trail. I just don't know a good one because what you really need to do for one of those is a really long exposure, but you'd also preferably want to be above um, the kind of intersection or road that you're shooting, just because that way, like there aren't like advertising screens on the side that are also just messing it up. Um, uh, providing their own light trails, there aren't as many pedestrians that you can see. Uh, just because the street level's a little bit gnarly like that. So I'm thinking of trying one more spot, kind of close to here, but I'll have to see. Uh, I'll let you guys know if I get there. But overall, very successful. Obviously didn't quite get to the videos I wanted to make, but that's okay. You know, I'm right, I live right close to downtown, so I can definitely come back and do it a different time. And of course, it's not necessary or there's no pressure because um, I don't have a due date for that. That's just something I wanted to do. Okay, I'm definitely in a time crunch now, but just so you know where I am, I am at the intersection of York Street, Front Street, and University Avenue. It is a pretty cool spot to be shooting. Like, you've kind of got an inter interesting intersection layout going on. But you may be able to tell, I am on the skywalk from Union Station to Rogers Center. And let me tell you, it is not a good view because we're barely above the street level. And the glass, as you can see, is filthy. Hello reflections. It's actually not so bad on the camera, but like you can still tell where some of the grime is on the windows. Plus, the intersection isn't super busy, but I'm gonna try and get a shot and see what happens. Holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. The photo low key turned out so good, except for the clearly visible grime on the windows. Oh, that sucks so much, dude. So, I have wrapped up shooting for the night. I'm actually headed back to my place. Anyways, sorry for the loud intersection, but I think that's gonna do it for the vlog today. 
I've still got a lot to do tonight, as a matter of fact. But I definitely will be at this again. So let me know in the comments or by leaving a like on the video if you want to see another vlog like this. Heading downtown, shooting some stuff. It's a lot of fun for me, so I hope it was a lot of fun for you as well. And again, let me know if you want to see another video like this. Hopefully you also learn a bit about nighttime photography as well as uh, some of the certain styles of photography I was doing. I'm going to be signing off for now right here. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And I uh, hope to see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.